Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. The legendary E40. What's happening? Welcome back. Right on. Man, you know what I be wondering, E40? Do you cook for Thanksgiving or do you let somebody else do it? My mother in law, my father in law, my wife, and my son, the Iron Skillet Master. So you I take do. the break on Thanksgiving? On Thanksgiving, I take the break. Why? I provide all of uh, the beverages. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, why do you take a, 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 a back seat on Thanksgiving? They cook better than me, bro. Really? Yeah, I go, I go crazy. But you know, when it comes to Thanksgiving foods, like you know, uh, dressing and <clears throat> my mother-in-law make these, um, these, them, you know, the yams over at um, Ruth Chris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The sweet potato casserole with the mu marshmallow in it. She do better. Than, she it has what is it? Walnuts? Is it walnuts on there? Pecan? She do it better than that. Like she do it better than the Ruth Chris sweet potato casserole. Damn. Yeah. So. Stuff like that. Wifey do potato salad and all that and chicken spaghettis and Ugh. not your normal chicken spaghetti too. We'll talk about all that. But um I'm hungry right now talking about all this. Because you food. think it's red sauce, but it's not. It's not red sauce? Nah. You nah. Can't, you can't give out the secret ingredient? I can't. <laughs> Cause I'm a co packet. Okay. It's okay. already in motion like the ocean. Okay, okay. Jesus, that was going we got, with the spoon. We got going with the spoon in the book. You and you and uh Snoop are on the cover. So you and uh, Snoop did this, did this together. Can Snoop cook? Uh, Snoop can cook. He got his little, you know, says little wickles. That what? That what is? What does he cook? Cause... I think he like to do fried chicken and stuff like that. You know, <laughs> I'm just all over the place like space with mine. I'm liable to do, um, you know, some orange ruffy or something with some uh, pan seared orange ruffy with some almond almonds and some yeah. butter and some uh, white <laughs> white wines. <laughs> I saw you do the, the other day. I saw you do a. a Mozzarella stuffed turkey meatloaf. Yeah, it go crazy. I don't too. even eat cheese, but I'm like, man, I would have to taste some of that. It's delicious, brother. Yes. Where do you even come up yeah, with these combinations? Where do you get recipes and ideas from? Um, just being um, just being greedy. <laughs> <laughs> just being greedy, straight up. You know, I've been cooking for many moons. Um, I used to work at this restaurant in uh, Benicia, California, um, called the Commonos Restaurant. Mm -hmm. I started off working in the. This when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, started off working in the kitchen, uh, washing dishes in the pantry. Next thing you know, a guy by the name of Lewis, he was the main chef there. And this place was like a, to me, it was like a Michelin star restaurant. A lot of rich people go there, mm -hmm. but it was, they wasn't giving out Michelin stars at that time. But if they was, that definitely would have been it because dude taught me how to make orange, uh, I told you about orange roughy, mm -hmm. um, chicken Gordon Blue, um, a Scargo, you understand me, um, London, London broil, you know, just all kind of just elegant stuff, you mm -hmm. know. And so, uh, but you know, along with Magazine Street, you know, I, I, top ramen noodles with eggs and stuff like that, you understand me? Um, I, I just go crazy. I just do what I, mm -hmm. what I feel tastes best, you know what I'm saying? I love making oxtails and a power it's pressure cooker, mm -hmm. oxtails, uh, short ribs, you know, gumbo, things of that nature. So this is interesting because, you know, I, I've, I've wondered where the, because I love watching you. I've been telling you this for years. I love watching you on Instagram and seeing you cook. So your family, you got come from a family of cooks and you worked in a restaurant. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Are you surprised yeah. with the receptiveness that you get from the cooking? Because I almost seem like it, like I, I see more people loving more the cooking than some of the music t at times. Hey, you know, people people love music, and, but they love food more than music, I think. Period. Mm -hmm. Don't you think so? When you wake yeah. up in the morning, you trying to hear music or you want to eat? Kind of both. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm you saying? You feel me? Yeah, so, you kinda, yeah, they kind of go hand in hand a mm -hmm. little bit. So, you know, yeah. I told in 2014, um, I had got a power pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started making all the, all the meals and stuff like that. And then, you know what I'm saying, uh, me and Be Legit got a song where, we, where he, Be Legit said, uh, The Goon with the Spoon. You know what I'm saying? And we said it on a couple of songs and whatnot. And, um... <clears throat> I was like, you know what? I start, I start hashtagging Goon with the Spoon. And then I told my boy Cousin Feek to have his guy go make the logo. So he went and made the logo. And so I, I feel like you know how you got McDonald's and you got Arby's mm -hmm. and you got Jack in the Box and so on and so forth. You know, those logos, they, they subliminally in your head. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to do when I got the vector. I put a, the vector on the, um, on every post that I did when I, made the, when I did the cooking. So you would always see Goon with the Spoon down at the bottom right hand corner. And so I knew what I was doing because I knew I was finna go into co-packing. Mm -hmm. 
So now the glue with the spoon is just not just me, just on Instagram. I'm a, it's a brand. Like I co-pack. Like I got going with the spoon ice cream, six different flavors. I got going with the spoon sausages, chicken teriyaki, pineapple, um, Philly chicken cheese steak, and mild beef and hot beef. Um, I got going with the spoon burritos. You understand me? And many more to come. So now we got the book. And Snoop Dogg was like. He say, uh, nephew, come on, man, listen. Well, Unc, I'm, you know, he called you about his nephew, but he, Unc, man, let's go, let's do something, man, because he was already in the, um, he already got his own book. It's a bestseller too, mm-hmm. and um, so he had the outlet, and I was like, you know, it's only right, I, you know, I don't have no pride problem, you know, that's the mm-hmm. problem with people. They got pride, they, you know, what I'm saying, put your pride to the sides, you know what I mean? I'm like, what better person to let, you know, what I'm saying, put it out on the platform? It's everywhere now, so it's out now. That's right. The gun with the spoon. And, and gun with the spoon, you weren't, it'd be legit wasn't talking about uh, cooking. <laughs> it's a double entendre. <laughs> <laughs> what is a good way to turn a, a so-called negative into a positive? That's right. So check yeah. game. So I feel like, you know how when you play basketball, a lot of people, like say, like say for instance, we got, um when we got uh, McCaffrey on our team, uh, the 49ers. Mm-hmm. My cousin, a Dallas Cowboy boy fan. Smart man. Yeah, he was Horrible like, man. Oh, for real? You think so? And he was like, you know, we talk big Bronco to each other, and I ain't talking about Denver Broncos. That's just a phrase I said. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was like, I ain't going to lie. McCaffrey, a dog. Right? So that the dog is not a dog in a bad way. It's like, right. he, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just like being a beast. Mm-hmm. So, you know, why I can't be a goon with a spoon cooker? That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. That's right. Now, now, you did mention basketball. Can we talk Warriors a little bit? You want to Dr- talk Warriors? Draymond Green just, just you know, grabbed the poor light skinned brother out his damn near out his shoes, man. What you what you want me to say? What you want? You talking to me? <laughs> what you know, you, I'm not gonna go against Draymond. First and foremost, he's sharper than a porcupine spine. That's right. And he observes everything. And most of the time, when he say rewind the, rewind the tape, yes, when, sir. When they call some bad stuff on him, he he right most mm-hmm. of the time. So. I'm just rocking with Draymond because when he when he react on something, I'll take his opinion. I I, I know I'm rocking with Jay, Draymond. He, most of the he time, should. he's real. He's most holding out his team, and he should. That most is my favorite NBA player. And he ain't let nobody do nothing to none of his team. That's no. right, especially Absolutely. playing stuff. Absolutely. And you don't win championships without a, a Draymond Somebody Green type that. player. A tough player, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Protected. Because cause, cause, uh, was Rodman, Rodman was a fool with it, huh? With the, was he? Uh, Rodman yeah, was a fool with it. He was a fool with it. Yeah, Rodman, was a fool with it. Oakley, yeah. Yeah, they was, they was with it. You need enforcers. The Pistons back then, they, they, they were fools with it. Absolutely. Now, now there was an incident that happened in, in Sacramento when, when you were out at, at the playoff game. Mm-hmm. What happened during that time? Um, Man, I just was just being me, man. I was just sitting courtside like I always do. I just so happened to go to Sacramento. I just did a successful bottle signing that Total Wine with all my liquor brands. Line was wrapped around the building. I know Sacramento loved me dearly. And just a heckler in the background and, um, you know, just was drunk or whatever. And I just I just was like, oh, tell me to sit down. I was, I was, what, I'm at the basketball, I'm front row. You, like, behind me, like, three rows up or whatever. You can't tell, you new to this. I've been doing this since Moby Dick was a goldfish, you dig? Mm-hmm. And so she was like, she told me to sit down again. And I looked back, and I didn't cuss her out or nothing. I said, hey. And they said, you know, the security came in. We just put it this way, man. We got it straight because I know that Sacramento loves me. I know Sacramento King fans love me. And the owner got big love for me. I'm, matter of fact, I'll be at the Gold One Center, um, what, December? December. Got a big show there. So mm-hmm. they own that building. So we rocking. Okay. I know. I know you're here to talk about your your 27th solo album, Rule of Thumb. But you know we can't. Look. Way more than that. I don't know why they keep putting 27. Not 20, how many is it's it? More than that. Oh, you, 30, 30 something. Damn. Jesus. Because you got to put my EPs up in that thing. You know uh, what I'm saying? Yeah, my solo EPs. Mr. Flamboyant came out in uh, 1989. Do you count the compilations too? Like, um, no, no compilation. I ain't even counting the compilations or the song, the albums with the click. Damn. None of that. Yeah. Mm. I've been doing this shit since uh, Kermit the Frog was a polywog. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, a couple weeks ago, November November 9th, 1993, federal album drop. It really was 1992. We used to put 92? it up a year because we was in. We when you say when we when you talk about independent, we was the real independent. Okay. Like you understand me? I'm talking about using City Hall Records as our main hub, and uh, music people. We didn't have a big distribution deal. You know, until like '94, when 
Jive Records and every label that in, that did rap music, they had a big bidding war on me. Mm-hmm. And uh, they wanted, you know, they wanted me, stick with the records. They wanted us, you know. And uh, I went ahead and went with Jive. But now nah, they, they put the, um, we used to always put it up a year because it would take some time to get to other states. And when it did get to other states, we wanted it to soak in. We didn't want them to think the album, the album or the EP is old. Mm. That was just our method. My Uncle St. Charles, um, I'm, I'm sure y'all heard me speak of Uncle St. Charles. That's my mother's brother, mm-hmm. blood. So, you know, everybody say, Uncle this, Uncle that. That's, mm-hmm. my, that's my bloodline. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, helped, you know what I'm saying, uh, the boy Master P and many of us, you know what I mean, from the beginning, because Master P used to be out there with us in the Bay Area in Richmond, California. Mm-hmm. So PC and how I was doing it, he was doing his thing too, but he wasn't doing it on the level that he was doing it when he once he got to with St. Charles, and then he just took it to big heights. So it's that's, been th- and that's my brother right now to this day. So it's been 31 years since Federal then, not 30. yeah, 1992. Damn, wow. came in. Damn, what, what 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 does your mind go when you think about that? It was gonna start off as an EP because that's what we was doing when you do solo stuff back mm-hmm. then. It was, and I I just had too much gas, and uh, I was like, man, let me you know what I'm saying, let me just go on and add some more songs to to make it an album. And that's the mind frame. I had a lot to say, um, being fresh from the soil, mm-hmm. and uh, way ahead of my time. Do you remember the impact it had? On- yeah, woke the game up. Yeah, I'm the dopest, bro. Only only suckers and clowns can't see it. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm above. I'm a, I'm beyond what they think. You know, you go back and listen to all my old stuff. You listen to my new slaps right now. Rule of thumb, you understand. Mm-hmm. I'm the epitome of mob music. I, I've been in every era. From the you understand me the black fist in the air with the you know with the with the African medallion in mm-hmm. the late '80s to you understand to the mob music era to the G funk to the South music with Cash Money and 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 A Bar and MJG and all all these cats you understand me Master P um, I'm the hyphy movement I'm just everything all in one. You think with the, with them celebrating 50 years of hip hop they celebrated you the right way? Yeah, I was I was part of a lot of it. Mm-hmm. I was part of all they they invited me to pretty much everything. Everything. Mm-hmm. You think they celebrated the beta right way? Um, I think they reached out to well, me and Short was there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, they reached out to um, you know, Hammer Hammer already said he he you know, a lot of them reached out to him. People didn't know that, but you know, Hammer chose to do what Hammer do. He 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 the OG. I got nothing but love for him, you know. Mm-hmm. Hammer wasn't even tripping. I don't know why, but I didn't ask him, but that's my big bro. You know what's interesting when you say about how you've been able to transcend through every genre? It's because your flow and rhymes have always been so unorthodox. They don't fit a time period anyway. Absolutely. There's no time <laughs> limit. That's real, bro. And nobody could bite it. Nobody. Mm-hmm. I, I don't even know what I'm going to do when I get in a vocal booth. I don't know what pattern I'm going to do. I don't know none of that. I just do it. Um, I'm a professional beat picker, mm-hmm. and I know I'm ahead of my time. You know, because I like to do things that's innovating. I like to do what everybody else don't. Even my slaps, I like them to be up tempo. I like them to be slow. I do it all. So I'm just, I love to talk about the, you know, the, the hard times, the struggle, climb up the ladder, trying to climb up the ladder and climb up and, and you know, get over the fence of the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? Um, Cause that's what we all, that's what we all work hard for is to, you know, provide our family with, uh, you know, with a better life. Mm-hmm. What's the difference between E40 that did Federal and E40 that did Rule of Thumb? The difference between E40 that did Federal and the E40 that did Rule of Thumb is now I, the things I would have said back then, I think things out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like back then, I was just a young, hard-headed, managed little dude. You know what I'm saying? Just, just spitting what I spit. Now, I'm more of a, uh, I'm more of a teacher. Mm-hmm. You know, and when I did talk about like trigger play and sliding, and you know what I'm saying, and all that whole spinning the block and all that stuff, it was, it was never. Um, like glorifying it. It was never glorifying. It was. A, I'm a storyteller. I'm a poet. I'm. You know. I got a verbal paintbrush. I paint pictures with my lyrics. So mm-hmm. that's one thing I've always did. And I talk about the consequences and repercussions about the situation. A lot of the cats don't. You know what I mean? If you do this, this could happen. Mm-hmm. You can lose a loved one. You know mm-hmm. they go take it out on somebody else. Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm saying? This. This is how this thing go. Mm-hmm. I. I spit all that. You know. So. You know we had a. Uh... Coco Jones up here one time and she was talking about the, one of the first times she ran into you. Do you remember? I don't remember, bro. All right. Well, I look, don't. I, re- I, I know what you're talking about, mm-hmm. but I don't remember. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't drunk. She said at the Rock Nation, right? Rock Nation brunch. She said she walked up to you and 
She just started rapping, busting around. I don't really, I don't, I just, Disrespect. you know, I just don't, I don't, I don't remember that, bro. Cause she, cause I, I seen her saying something about, um, what did she say? She say, she, she said, I said shorty, was it shorty? I don't even, that ain't even in my vocabulary. That's too basic for Yeah, for that's 40. too basic for Fody water. <laughs> that ain't in my, you know what I'm saying? I'll say something way slicker than that. <laughs> so, you know, maybe she was just, I don't know, maybe she thought I was somebody else. I don't know, she, cause me and Buster, we got, we rap different. We two of the most creative rappers on earth. And, mm-hmm. you know, maybe she thought that or something, but we don't look alike or nothing, you know, but that's my guy, you know. Um, but I don't recall that. Mm-hmm. But hey, it is what it is. It's, you know, she. I, everybody don't know me. Cause I've been around, like I say, ever since you know Yogi Bear was a teddy bear, mm-hmm. you know the the late eighties. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And so you know maybe she didn't know me really. I, you know I I don't I don't get offended. It's gravity. Mm-hmm. What 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 advice would you? Well, first of all, I want to say congratulations to you too for uh, having your childhood street renamed after you. Yeah, that's dope. And you Thank got the you. key to the city of Vallejo. How did how did that feel? Man, that's a dream come true. Cause I think that was the only the second time that they gave. Somebody the key to the city in what a hundred years? What? Wow, so, seventy years? Oh, hundred and seventy years. Seventy wow. years. Yep, I got the key to the city, bro. I deserve it, man. I put Vallejo on the map, hands down. Absolutely. You have you had Sly and the Family Stone. Mm-hmm. You had the Function, which I love dearly. Michael Cooper and them and Felton Pilot. Um, and then you, as far as rap, E Forty put Vallejo on the map, straight up nationwide. Who debating that? Nobody. Suckers. <laughs> For real. Suckers. Nobody. Suckers. That you, that you understand me? I'm too much, man. I'm too much, but I'm very I'm very humble. Mm-hmm. But I'm just telling the truth. I really deserve the key to the city, the street, everything. Magazine Street, I talked about that for my whole career. Mm-hmm. The other day I seen you smelling down magazine with some old sucking in your car looking at me, me, and I stopped in the middle of the street, streets under my seat and grabbed my heat. Man, that's that same motherfucker that I got into it with the cl- at the club last week. That's Captain Stable Ho, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I'm just saying, I, I, that was 1993 when mm-hmm. I did this. So I've, been, I've been talking about it for many moons. Magazine Street, that's why, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, learned all my street knowledge and everything. I had a front row seat there. That's when, that's where it all unfolded at. Who called you? How, how was that called on? Um, so, you know, I've, I've one, I, two years, three years ago, I called one of the old mayors and uh, I was like, and I didn't follow up with it, you know? And so I, I talked to, um, I seen a short hat here. So I'm like, so I talked my, I say, I say, how do you, and so I talked to my publicist Didier. Mm-hmm. I say, man, hi, man, get, man, hey, man, see how we how we can do that, <laughs> you know? What I'm saying? Oh, Too Short got a street too. Yeah, Short got a street okay. in the in the town, Oakland. Too Short Way, right? Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. I called my publicist Didier and Didier and my man Galen. They put it together like the weather. They put the request in, and what was the uh, they the whole city council voted me in. No, not one person said no. I mean, it was given. I this I've done a lot for the community. A lot of things I don't say I've done, mm-hmm. but I've done a lot for the community. When you speak of Vallejo, when you speak of the Bay, you you who do you say? E forty mm-hmm. and two, and two short. And two yeah, E forty and two go. short. That's right. You you also have the title of having the most charting albums in Billboard history, top two hundred album entries. Okay. Yeah. I mean, with 30, 33. 33. Damn. Mm-hmm. Somebody's about to beat me though. Who? NBA Young Boy. Really? Young Boy putting out an album every damn month. He did four. <laughs> he did four this year already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm back on mine though. You know, because I, you know, so I'm I'm putting out four within the next uh, eight months. Okay. So you're gonna have Rule of Thumb one that's coming out tonight at nine o'clock West Coast time. You got Rule of Thumb two coming out in January. Mm-hmm. Rule of Thumb three coming out in March. Rule of Thumb four coming out in May. Are they done already? I mean, rule of, not rule of thumb four. I'm sorry. I have to. So I, it's two on each one. Yeah, they 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 done. But you know, we record all the way until it's the day that we really finna dang there. You know, about a week before we really finna just drop it, drop it. Because I might come over to slap out of nowhere. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So um, so here we go. Here it is. It's rule of thumb one, rule of thumb two. Then I'm coming with songs for every emotion one and songs for every emotion two. And that's what I do. I got songs for every emotion. So why not do it? Now, what, 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 what is the chart? What does the entry thing mean to you? Like when you get records like that, do you does that mean something to you? What the, um, to have the thirty three? What is the thirty three most? 33 oh yeah, entries. that means something. I mean, that's dope. That mm-hmm. mean you know what I'm saying consistency, and you know what I mean just to be able to you know make those charts. Billboard is a big deal. Mm-hmm. You know, Billboard is a big deal. Now it's, I see BG's on the album. Yeah, that's my guy. How'd you hook up with BG since he been home? I'm I'm, I'm assuming. Oh. 
you know, I stayed, you know, rocking with him, you know, um, on Instagram and whatnot. And then through Birdman, that's my guy. Mm-hmm. And um, when he came home, I said, Birdman, I hit him on the DM. I say, Birdman, tell BG I love him and tell him to send, tell, tell him I say what's up. And he was like, Ford, he asked about you. And uh, he was he did time with my brother in law, Mac Russ, too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Boss Mackin. And so, um, but I've been knowing BG since he was a young mustache. You know, him, Lil Wayne, all of them. They was on um, my album, Charlie Hustle. We had a song called Look At Me. We did it over at Bosco Conte House, my boy, the producer Bosco. And um, it was me, Lil Wayne, Birdman, BG, Juvenile, and Turk. Mm-hmm. All of us together in this this nudio, mm-hmm. right? So, I was the first one that Cash Money was featured on a, a, another person's a, rapper's album. They wasn't doing that back mm-hmm. then, mm-hmm. and I was the first one to be on, featured on their album. They wasn't letting anybody in like that. So we've been rocking, me and Birdman and Slim, been rocking since nineteen ninety eight. Mm-hmm. Damn, yeah. Man, you done seen it all. You know, I be wanting to ask you for Have you? Did you ever have a relationship with Easy? I, I really didn't, bro, and I had love for him. I met him a couple of times. He's kind of quiet when I seen him, but mm-hmm. not disrespectful. He was just, he was a businessman. He was handling his business. Had big love for Eazy. Grew up on his music as well, you mm-hmm. know. He was older than me. You know, I'm an old head. He was he was older than me in uh, real real boss mode, you know. But no, nah, I didn't, man. Mm-hmm. I, Cube is my guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know Cube. <laughs> yeah, I did the Mount, the Mount Westmore. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. How did you feel about I that? I talk to Cube every day. Oh, Whether every day? text or phone, yeah. Okay. Yeah. When y'all first meet? Maybe 92, 93, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. But he had been around way before that, you know what I'm saying? But Cube has always showed me love. We got records together. I mean, one time I had called him and I said, Cube, can you get on this song? He was um he was in Sacramento. He had a show out there. And I said, since you in town, can you come through and to my sister's studio at the coffee table? I sent a car service. He said, let me check my schedule. Let me see what time I got to go on. And he was like, send the car. Send me the address. He was in Sacramento. Came to the house. My sister's studio at. Knocked out a song called Behind Gates. I didn't have, I didn't have a title or nothing. He was like, he he had the title. And him and uh, MC Wren came. Came and knocked it out. Went back and did his show. About a month later, I said, can we do a video to this? And he said, of course. And I say, how much you going to charge me? You know what he said? Nothing. Just show me when to come. Just tell me tell me, tell me when to be there, and I'm there. And he showed up, did the video, so y'all can look up behind gates. Me and me and Cube on that thing. Wow. Did you did you like the reception to Mount Westmore? Do you feel like it was like too late to do that project? I mean, it's never too late to do never something. Never too late. Yeah. But you feel like y'all would have had a lot more impact if y'all had did it early in your careers. You know, I just you know I take. You know, we just got a lot let nature take its course because I don't think right. we would even did it because we even know we love each other and everything, mm-hmm. but it was the right time to do it. The plan, the pandemic was, uh, <laughs> you know, in motion like the right. ocean. Mm-hmm. So we was all in in, mm-hmm. in in the house, you know what I'm saying? Everybody got their own access to studios and you know what I mean? And uh, we were just sending shit back and forth and we made it happen. We recorded over 50 songs. We're going to continue to do it. We all, you know, Snoop Dogg is the busiest of all of us. You Absolutely. know, that boy everywhere like air. Mm-hmm. You dig? So. How did you get into the business of all of this, though? Like, you know, you, you hear about, you know, there's a lot of rappers that get into liquor, but the the, the, the co-packing, what do you call it, co-packing? Co-packing. The food industry. How do you get into the food industry? Um, Like I say, I've always wanted to do it. I got seasonings and sauces and all kind of stuff in the come, bro. Mm-hmm. But it's a brand and it's just, it all comes hand, hand in hand. Music, food, mm-hmm. and beverages. Started off selling wine online, Earl Stevens Selections, Mango Scotto, you know what I'm saying? Function Red Blend and Muscato. Those are the first three SKUs that I had. Don't let me go down the line now. That's just, I could fill up this whole room with all my liquor. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Different brands, and, I, and it's 100% black owned. Did you, do you have to reach out to people to make those the products happen, like as far as the food, or somebody came to you? Nah, you know, you just, you it, it all, once you in it, you in it. You mm-hmm. just one thing leads to another. You find you you get your connections, this, that, and the third. You know, you get your consultants. You hire. You make sure you have your lawyers. The lawyers is for the paperwork because it's a lot of licensing and all kind of stuff that goes with everything for us food and beverage, uh, especially your alcohol. Mm-hmm. It, I make it look easy, but it's not that easy. And my wife do all the compliance and not the, the logistics and all that. Mm-hmm. And um, 
we we family owned, bro. We black owned business for real Congrats. from the ground up, man. I'm talking about no investors, no nothing, man. It's all you understand me, the Stevens. Mm -hmm. man, uh -huh. you, you another one of the brothers, man. I always look to, and I'd be like, man, you got. That's why having a great woman is is, is so important, mm -hmm. you know, because you had a great woman for a long time, been Absolutely. with her for a long time. How important is having that? That's my backbone. That's my that's my soulmate. You know, it's no secret. I love her. And, you know, we came up, you know, living off of love. You know, when I was just Earl. <laughs> Before I was E forty, you feel right, me? Right. It was you know, so since te since teenage life, you know, mm -hmm. here we is together. All these many moons, many moons. Living off of love. That's right. We was just living off of love. <laughs> making right. it happen, man. You Word. know. <laughs> now, I, I got to ask, these, these one-liners that you have, 40, do you write them down? Because you have a one-liner for everything. I, I swear, you must, if you had to count how many one-liners you do, it has to be thousands a day. I just got memory like a spelling bee. See? <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, you don't write them down or nothing, you just... I just... I just, you know, log it in, you know. I heard porcupine spawn. I heard <laughs> something like a tadpole this morning. I said he was young as a mustache. I just heard so many. I I'm got like, plenty. Jesus. I, if you sit down with me, man, you you hear a whole bunch of stuff. It just come out natural like an afro. See? Yeah, I was looking at the, uh, the, the, the genius when you did the definitive guide, the E-40 slang. Mm -hmm. Like what, it be them Bootsy motherfuckers in your town that's always dying. That's why I'm talking Bootsy. about Bootsy. So when I say Bootsy. You ain't talking about the rapper. No, not not Boozy. No. Yeah, I know. That's my guy. <laughs> um, I'm talking about Boosie Collins, but Boosie mm -hmm. Collins is a legend. He's Boosie. Only time Boosie really should be somebody should be called Boosie, like that's Boosie Collins. He the only one. And when I say Boosie, it's like if you ever look at how he dressed, mm -hmm. he overdoes it. Mm -hmm. He dresses flamboyant, but he do it in his way. It's it's just, he can he the only one who can do it. You know what I'm saying? Him and maybe Elton John and maybe I don't know Liverace and. You know, people like that, you know, they dress different. And so Bootsy was really, because I had a song in 19, oh, shoot, look, <laughs> this is a trip. Let me tell y'all how, how how long I've been putting Bootsy, the name, the word Bootsy on, uh, you know, in the atmosphere. In 1989 on Mr. Flamboyant, I say, meanwhile, Bootsy was coming around the corner on two shoes, I mean wheels, scatting in the 76 Cutlass Oldsmobile. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. two shoes, what I, what I mean by two shoes? I was thinking. I was thinking rims. I was the first one talking about shoes, calling calling rims mm -hmm. shoes mm -hmm. and toes, gold tippy toes, all that. You mm -hmm. understand me? So Boosie, that's nineteen eighty nine. How many years is that now? That's thirty four. I'm terrible at math. It's a long time. Ninety three, two thousand. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So Boosie is just somebody that overdoes it, mm -hmm. you know, or just do just do some old loud stuff like just just over. They kind of twisted around the, the word around like oh he hell. One time somebody called me oh he hella boosy. You can't call me some something that I coined. <laughs> the hell wrong with these fools, man? <laughs> I'm the first rapper hollering hella. Oh absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I, I, what I'm gonna do one day I'm gonna come back right. Mm -hmm. Maybe one of the, the the second rule of thumb if y'all if y'all have me of course. Or, or um or either the um songs for every emotion. And we're gonna break it down. Let's break it down, and let's uh, and we have the song play. I will tell you what year, and we play the little line. Of, we go all the way back to '88. I love to do that. I, I was trying yeah. to figure out: did you did you coin the terms "save a hoe" or "Captain Save a Hoe"? You save, can't, a, save a hoe. The first rapper screaming "Save a hoe." You know, people. Like, everybody say you can't say these hoe, but did you start that? Yeah, because what okay. it is, save a hoes. That's a, a so listen. A captain save a hoe is a dude that. Like come to the rescue and try to make a hoe into a housewife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. That's not like treating your wife, you know, buying her stuff like that. A hoe is a a, a batch that you know that got more miles on them than Spears Airline. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you try to make that not be that no more. But she a hoe gonna be a hoe. Mm -hmm. So you know. And then there's a lot of cats out there that are really like kill you over over actual broad that ain't cool. Mm -hmm. That's you know that will line you up in the whole wickle. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So and that was ninety four, and the whole the ninety three, ninety three. That was ninety three. Okay, yeah. and the whole uh, the the sheezies. For sheezy. You said for sheezy. For sheezy. The it, first time I heard for sheezy, that's from the, a lot of my words be from the streets. Okay, but that's what what don't most rappers' words be from the streets? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you absolutely. feel me? You know, I'm just crafty with mine. I just mm -hmm. I come with my own too, my own stuff too. But first time I heard for sheezy um, was um. My boy Twice, Twiceberg, good friend of mine, good people, solid, gamed up. Mr. Tap the Map himself, you know what I'm saying? 
Um, I was producing a record for him because I'm a I'm a composer. I'm a I'm a producer too on the tuck. Y'all just don't know. I'm a mm-hmm. professional beat picker and a composer. And um, so twice I had produced a song for him and his guy, and uh, he was with who was he with? He was one of the major labels. So we had studio tones and uh, we just chopping it up, drinking and shit. And he was like, "Yeah, E for Sheezy, man." You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. For, like for show, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was like, Ugh, what's that? You know what I'm saying? That's the first time I ever heard it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's like 1990, what year was that? 94, maybe 94, 95, somewhere around there. Because the first time it was ever said on Wax for Sheezy was 1996. And that was me and Too Sheezy, Too Short. Mm-hmm. He was like, he feezy, Too Sheezy. Man, we off the easy for Sheezy. And I said, I thought you Theezy, my Neezy, whatever I said, right? Mm-hmm. So that was the first time it was ever said on Wax. But twice with the first so then I said uh so three uh, one day I, before I said that though I was at um I was at uh what was I at I'm sorry let me get back in the mic I'm playing um I was at um my boy's um uh my boy Dollars and Spence mm-hmm. we was in the studio with Dollars and Spence and he was putting out a group called Three Times Crazy and uh that's what the group Keek the Sneak is in mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying and Keek was and so I said it I said but I said I said for shizzy right and the boy Bart, one of the members, you know, Bart gamed up and whatnot. He was like, "Yeah, E, but it's it's for Sheezy, like that, right?" I said, "Oh, okay, okay. That's what that's what Twice was saying the other day. He was saying for Sheezy, not for Shizzy, right?" And so I liked it. So then I knew how to say it correctly because I'm I'm human. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And so uh, we put it in the record, first one ever on Wax ever saying for Sheezy, and for Shizzle and all, all the whole Woo Wop. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So Snoop gets a lot. He gets the credit for it. Though. Yeah, for, for he gets for credit. He gets the shizzle. credit for for shizzle because yeah, yeah. he, you know, he, you know, Snoop is a a fan of of uh, Bay Area music. Mm-hmm. Not just me. You know, four one five. You know, he t- easily tell you, mm-hmm. um, the four one five. That's Richie Rich and DJ Duro now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, they that's why they named their group the two one three. You feel me? So he love he love us, man. We we rock with L A. We rock with Snoop Dogg. Mm-hmm. We don't rock, rock with Daz and all of them. We've been, we've been. I got a pitch with Droopy, my son Droopy, when Snoop was at our house in Fairfield, California, in mm-hmm. uh, Rancho Solano, playing video games, arcade games. Droopy was a little young mustache playing video games with him and Nate Dog. Mm-hmm. Like we go way back, many moons. Do you think your uh, 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 your most famous slang is popo? That's one of them. The first everybody rapper everybody ever calls seen. the police popo. Yeah, yeah. everybody, yeah. <laughs> Movies and everything. Mm-hmm. I done seen it. I done seen so much of my slang, words that I've coined, words that I said first on wax, um, really, really just in com- crossover commercial, all kind of commercials and everything, yeah. That was 93 Movies. when you said popo. Yes, it was. 92. Damn, I keep, I'm almost it's federal. off a year. Federal. Federal, okay, okay. But it's documented as 93, you okay. know. That's how that's how they remember I told you we put it up a year yeah, before. We, but you can hear me on there saying uh, on, on like if you listen to some of the song, I say 92, 93, some stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You understand me? So E40 got a skedaddle. Oh, that, I got that, that was whack. <laughs> yeah, whatever you, you, whatever you tried to do just now. He got that a skedaddle. He got, he got he gotta leave. Forty they, they, water gotta bust the pattern. What? I gotta bust the pattern. You gotta bust the pattern. That mean I gotta bust the move. I gotta move. I gotta get up out of here. That's I gotta right. t- I gotta tear up out of here, man. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Me? <laughs> but we appreciate you for joining Always us. Go with the spoon. Man. The book is out right now. Of Rule course, of thumb will be the out. album Rule of Thumb Rule is out thumb, right now. Man. Yeah, tonight, we, tonight, 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 and on it's East, East Co- on West Coast time, nine p.m. Nine p.m. East Coast time, twelve p.m. Twelve a.m. Mm-hmm. Make sure y'all get Rule of Thumb twenty three slaps back to back. Stop playing with water. It'll be out today, actually. We airing it today. tomorrow. Yeah, yeah so it'll be yeah. out today. Okay, yeah. for shiggity, for there shiggity. you have it. It's E forty. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.